Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Going On. I'm your host, Tom D'Ambra. As always, we're very thankful you take the time from your busy day to view our program. My friends, a tremendous amount going on in the world, so let's get right to this. Uh, before we start, I would like to uh, give a public recognition to a true patriot, a woman who passed away this past Sunday evening uh, after battling cancer. Uh, her name was Joyce Riley. For those of you who do not know Joyce, uh, you missed an incredible opportunity from a woman who dedicated her life uh, to not only educating the American people, uh, but also I know of no other person who has done more for the veterans, uh, particularly the veterans of Gulf War I and Gulf War II, Iraq, and so forth. Um, she was a fighter an educator, a liberator, and uh, she really dedicated her life. Once she, she was a flight nurse in the United States Air Force, a captain, and once she realized what was going on, she decided and dedicated her life to that decision to educate the American people and help all the veterans that they can. And they did that. Her and her husband, Dave Von Kleist, um, very much were dedicated their lives to educating the American people. Joyce will not only sadly be lost for her love of country, her love of her fellow human beings, um, and her energy, but she will also be lost uh, by all of us who came to know her as just simply Joyce, a tremendous woman, a tremendous patriot. And Joyce, we are certain that you had a peaceful transition to the next realm. May God bless you, God speed, and we thank you, all of the Patriot Movement, Joyce. We thank you so much for your efforts and your dedication and love of country. Okay, my friends, let's go on with uh, a lot of some events that are going on that the mainstream media uh, is not told you about. This is the USS Donald S. Cook. We reported this to you uh, about two years ago now. Uh, why we have this ship uh, presented to you is because on top of this is an Su-30. It's an older Soviet, uh, excuse me, Russian uh, aircraft. And why we're showing this to you, my friends, is that a couple of years ago, this ship was uh, on patrol in the Adriatic Sea, and the ship went dead. This is a Burke-class ship with the Aegeus system on it, top of the line, best in the world, and so forth. This ship was underway under its own power um, and was engaged by this uh, a aircraft here, the SU, Russian Su-30, and everything went dead, folks. And we reported this to you. The engines went dead, the CIC, Combat Information Systems, went dead, the C-3 went dead, Command Control Communications, everything went dead. They couldn't even turn a light bulb on. If anyone knows anything about military naval ships, there is redundancy upon redundancy for systems. Everything went dead. The ship actually put out a May Day, and then the ship had to be towed to fleet headquarters in Bahrain. Incredible. And the Su-30, and this is an old Russian aircraft, my friends, the Su-30, as the ship lay dead in the water, unable to even go un underway on its own power, the plane did three times uh, of pra what's practicing what's called strife runs on the USS Donald Cook. My friends, we don't do strife runs too much because of the technology where, uh, you know, avionics is gone um, and, and, you know, hardware is gone for bombs and missile technology and all that. That was purely an antagonist move on the Russians to let them know, to let the Americans know that, yes, we did this to you and there's nothing you can do about it. Let us continue. Now, also what's going on, and we reported this to you in the past, we had a Russian submarine that sat off the uh, United States coast in the Gulf of Mexico 
that sat there for over 30 days, and we reported this to you, and the United States military never knew it was there, and then it went to the surface to show itself like, hey, 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 yes, we, we've been here, and then went back down and left. Incredible technology the Russians have gone on. Then we had the most recent episode. And the reason why it was showing this ship, my friends, is this is the USS Fitzgerald that was uh, just last week in a collision uh, with a frigate, a privately owned frigate that was literally two and a half times the size of the destroyer, the USS Fitzgerald. Now this also is a Burt class destroyer that also has top of the line Aegeus control system. This is the top of the line. This is the best the United States has to offer, my friends. Understand this. This is the frigate that hit it. As I've said to you, um, this frigate is two and a half times the size of the USS Fitzgerald. This is an overview of the uh, map of the tracking of the, U of the uh, ACX crystal. Uh, it's, it started out at Nagoya. It was going to go to Yokosuka and eventually land in Tokyo. Now, my friends, it, interestingly enough, I have traveled every inch of the world on this map, and I can tell you I'm very familiar with these grounds. And what I want to also get into you with is the particulars here. So what we have here is we have this vessel, and again, I'm going to show it to you one more time. It's two and a half times the size of the Fitzgerald. Again, this is the over, overland, overview route that it was taking, uh, the, uh, the crystal was taking. And then we're going to get into down here, the approx it says approximate location of crash at 0230 local time. The first contact with the ship, and I don't mean physical contact, I mean, when I say contact, my friends, every ship has, especially military ships, but every ship has an area around it that is sovereign to that ship. And if anything comes within that boundary, encroaches within that limit boundary, there are various things that happen, even if it's, this is a civilian frigate ship, or it's a, it doesn't matter. Military ship, civilian ship, it doesn't matter. And what happens is there's a, a potential collision that's going to take place. And once these detection systems of various levels of technology and abilities, but they all have it. And the Aegeus system is the, supposedly the best in the world at detecting any time there's an encroachment into these areas of this any particular ship. There is a collision, potential collision warning alarm that is given off automatically. And, the, and everyone is called to what's known as general quarters. And that means that you're going to go to your what we used to call battle station, general quarters. Anytime there's a potential threat to that ship, every person on that ship has an assigned area to go to. This is an automatic uh, uh, system, and this is something that is drilled and trained and drilled and drilled constantly. You ask anyone who's been in the military, they all, especially in the Navy, or anyone who's been involved in aviation, they all know of this, okay? Everyone knows of it. Even as a Marine uh, that was on naval vessels, on troop transport ships, even though we were not assigned to that ship permanently, we had general quarters that we would go to. So. We have to ask ourselves, look at this route here. First of all, the ship, the crystal, turns towards the Fitzgerald. Notice that after this point, the Fitzgerald is no longer underway. 
Notice that the Fitzgerald, and I'm going to prove this to you, doesn't change its location from when the first contact is made. And when I say contact, again, I want to qualify, this ship, the crystal, the frigate, is in the zone, if you would, the sovereign zone of the Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald did not try to evade, power down, power up, turn starboard, turn port, whatever. It never tried to evade the ship. Let us continue. Notice that the crystal turns towards the Fitzgerald, then turns away from the Fitzgerald, and then turns 180 degrees back to the Fitzgerald, and this is when the contact is made, the collision. Understand this. Let us continue. There's another overview of it from two different sources. Okay? So then after the contact, so we have the initial contact. Then we have the uh, crystal moving away, doing 180 degrees, collides with the Fitzgerald, and then evade, uh, doesn't evade, but collides with it and then uh, goes off and on, on to its, um, uh, where it's going to go for port of call. Now, how do I know this, that the Fitzgerald was, quote unquote, dead in the water? And what that means, it was no longer under its, underway under its own power. Before I show you the picture, I want you to understand, my friends, that I, I was in the medical field for decades in emergency medicine. And I used to teach the class about mechanisms of injury. And, of course, I am not a, a naval person that I can look at a ship and, and estimate, you know, tonnage and how it's made and all these things. But because of my education, I am able to look at any accident. Now, I spent five years in the Marine Corps, just under five years in the Marine Corps, uh, as an aviation rescue specialist. I used to do crash rescue when I did SAR. I also was taught mechanisms of injury at that level. So say you show, you show up on an EMS, if you show up, and anyone is at a certain level of education, you show up at an a automobile accident, my friends, you don't just jump out of the ambulance and run into it. You sit back and you analyze the scene. And you're, you're looking for mechanisms of potential injury. I want you to look at this picture and look close. And Bill, if we can bring this up on the screen a whole hard, you know, 100%, I thank you. But you'll notice something about this picture. The impact is broadside, to use an automobile term, T-boned, into the Fitzgerald. Now, most of the damage here, my friends, you can't see because the crystal under, at the beginning of the keel and the bow underneath had a protrusion, okay? And you'll see that on a lot of ships. So the, the, most of the damage that all these compartments were flooded and the unfortunate seven sa American sailors died brutally, notice there is no scraping left or right of this impact. See, if the Fitzgerald was underway, my friends, it wouldn't be, quote, such a clean impact. There would be the point of impact, and then there would be, if the ship was moving forward, there would be scraping all along the, the side of that ship. It wouldn't be so clean. There's the puncture, and then there's the relief. There's no puncture, and then continue scraping along the ship. The Fitzgerald, my friends, was dead in the water. It was not underway. The engines were shut down, or at least not engaged. Now we do know from the Navy itself that there was no warning of the collision. 
So that tells me all the CIC was down, the Aegeus systems were down, the electronics were down, the C3 command control communications were down, everything was down on this ship. There was no warning given. Why is it that the official first contact, according to the Navy, took place at 132? Why is it that the, the crystal turns around, makes that big 180, and then collides with the Fitzgerald an hour later, as reported? Why is, was this ship dead in, in the water, shut down? Here's a, bigger, a better close-up, and I thank Bill for all his efforts. Again, you will see a clean puncture. There is no, uh, no collateral damage left or right of the initial contact point. Why? It's because when this frigate that is two and a half times in tonnage the size of the Fitzgerald, when it hit, the Fitzgerald wasn't under power to go all the way through. No, it hit and continued broadside. It pushed the ship. Why? Because the Fitzgerald was dead in the water. Somebody else had done what happened to the Donald S. Cook, my friends, at the cost of these seven American sailors' lives. And we're sorry to the families, to the loved ones, and everyone who signs up in the military knows this is the risk you take. But we also, when we sign up in the military, want answers should something happen to us. And that's what this show is about, truth. My friends, the USS Fitzgerald was under attack, literally under attack. It was attacked by a nation, someone that had the ability to penetrate, control, and shut down all of the C3, CIC, and Aegis systems on that ship. Now, I'm not going to go on more about it for the sake of time, but I want to tell you, and I, I, I'm not reporting this as fact, but I will tell you that information has come out. And I, again, uh, I hesitate saying this, but I'm saying this with a caveat, that North Korea, from sources that are out there, was involved with this. I don't know if that's true, but the only other countries that are in that area that have the ability to do that are Russia, China, and North Korea. There's nobody else. Russia, I do not believe, was involved. They have nothing to gain. They've already shown their capabilities with the submarine, with the USS Donald Cook with making an American submarine, which we reported to you a couple of years ago, rise to the surface because they had shut down their air filtering systems. My friends, as someone would, would understand this, this was an act of war. This wasn't just like the Russians did, hey, see what we can do. Don't play with us. This was, see what we can do, and now we're going to pursue you. That's what this was. Okay, my friends, I could go on a lot about that, but for the sake of time, we are going to go on. Mr. Putin, Mr. Putin took some actions. He's tired of his aircraft getting shot out of the sky. Fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters getting shot out of the sky. He's tired of his two convoys. Uh, being, uh, being shot at by the Americans. He's tired of burying his soldiers. He's tired of other countries that were not invited into Syria being there and shooting at his military. 
He's tired of the United States and the coalition forces training, supplying, uh, and, su and supplementing and financing ISIS when they say that they're there to conquer ISIS. So Mr. Putin, I applaud him, shot our best drone out of the sky about six days ago. I don't blame him. He warned the United States. And he, and he shot it down, my friends, with an SA-300 system. That's two generations back from the SA-400 and their best, the 500. So if they're shooting our best stuff out of the sky with their older stuff, what do you think they can really do? I applaud you, Mr. Putin. And why do we use this, sh this, this picture constantly? Because look in the background. This was Mr. Putin showing the Russian people, we have your gold, not the international bankers. Mr. and Mrs. America, I ask you again, when is the last time you saw your gold? I'll tell you when, March 9th, 1933, and you haven't seen it since. I don't blame Mr. Putin for what he did. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for this man right here, we would be at thermal nuclear war. Because you think about this. What would the American people demand of President Trump if the Russians, the Chinese, and the Iranians came to this country to fight, as we said, say, all the crime, is, all the murders going on in Chicago? What would you demand of your president? You would demand of your president that he activate the military and get these foreign menaces out of our country. Well, we have foreign menaces in our country. They are known as international bankers. They are known as NGOs. They are known as traitors. That's who's occupied our country. Let us continue. This is a quote from Mr. John Swinton, former editor-in-chief of, uh, of the New York Times and the New York Post uh, back in the day. Great, great quote. Th uh, just to give you the background of this quote, my friends, this is when he's at his retirement gala, and, the, and, and everybody there is in the media. Now, listen, this, is, this quote is actually from 1924. Uh, I know that says 1880 here. Uh, that's when he began his career. Okay, listen to this quote now. This is from a guy in the know. And don't think it's changed at all since then. It's actually gotten worse, and we're going to prove that to you. The business of journalists is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities, and our lives are all the property of other men. He goes on to say, I know this quote doesn't have the whole thing, but this is a short version of it. He goes on to say, we are nothing more than intellectual prostitutes. The business of the journalist is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities, and our lives are all the property of other men. For we are nothing more than intellectual prostitutes. Headline. CNN exposed. Producer caught on camera admitting there's no proof for Russian narrative. All done for ratings. Project Veritas has released a video of CNN producer John Bonifield who was caught on camera, on hidden camera, excuse me, admitting that there is no proof to CNN's Russian narrative. I mean, it's mostly, I can't use the full words, bull dung right now, Boniface says. Uh, we don't have any 
proof. He confirms that the driving factor at CNN is ratings. It's a business. People are like the media, has, uh, has an ethical, an ethical, and, and then he goes, please. All the nice, cutesy little ethics that used to get talked about in journalism school, you're just like, that's adorable, that's adorable. But this is all business. According to the CNN producer, business is booming. Trump is good for business right now, he concluded. Bonafield further goes on to explain that the instructions come straight from the top, citing the CEO, Jeff Zucker. Just to give you some contents, President Trump pulled out of the climate accords, and for a day and a half, we covered the climate accords. And the CEO of CNN, Jeff Zucker, said, uh, in, in our internal meeting, he said, good job, everybody, covering the climate accords, but we're done with that now. We are going back to Russia. Bonafield also acknowledged, I haven't seen any good evidence to show that the president committed any crime. I just feel like they don't really have it, but they want to keep digging. So I think that the president is probably right to say, look, you are on a witch hunt hunting me. You have no smoking gun. You have no real proof. To report on facts, but instead on narratives that yields high ratings is exactly the definition of fake news, said James O'Keefe. We said we are going after the media and there's a lot more to come. I applaud you, Mr. O'Keefe. Folks, please go to Project Veritas, that's V-E-R-A-T-A-S. And for those of you that were educated in the public fool system, Veritas is Latin for truth. Let us continue. More lies. You ready for this one? U.S. lie. This is from the uh, website Hang the Bankers. Uh, U.S. lied about Syrian chemical attacks and then bombed them anyway. No one, no one, uh, never one to accept the U.S. government's official explanation of events without question. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hearst has investigated Donald Trump's decision to strike the Al Shahat Air Base in Syria in April of this year, which the president launched amid widespread allegations that the Syrian government committed a chemical weapons attack. In a report entitled Trump's Red Line, published Sunday in the daily German newspaper Der Welt, uh, Hearst asserts that President Donald Trump ignored important intelligence reports when he made the decision to attack Syria after pictures emerged of dying children in a war-torn country. Always got to have the children. Remember Hegelian dialectic, my friends. Crisis, reaction, solution. Remember that. Never forget that. Always ask key bono. Who's benefiting here? Okay. The official White House explanation, um, uh, exp excuse me, also, in, in the detail in this whole thing, I'm running out of time already, is about the sarin. There wasn't any. But anyway, we're, we're going to go on with this. Um, my friends, I'm running out of time already. But anyway, we're going to get into the whole thing uh, lately of, about how this was all lie. Russia, Hearst continues. Let me make sure I got Mr. Hearst's statement here. Um, basically, that... The White House uh, explanation of the events of the April this year was that Donald Trump was moved by the suffering of beautiful Syrian babies. Of course. It's just like the, 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 the Murrah Building, Oklahoma City, right? They told, the, they told the IRS and the Secret Service and all the people that were in that federal building not to come to work that morning, but they let the babysitting uh, air, area there stay open. Why? because they needed the pictures of the dead babies to get the same emotional response from you that they got the anti-terrorist bill passed because of it that they couldn't get done a month earlier in Congress. And the same thing happened with Donald Trump. He was taken in by it. Who doesn't get emotional about children being murdered? The question is, he should have asked, who did this? Okay. Uh, on the assistance that the uh, 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 Syrian Assad was to blame. Hearst continues, Russia and Syrian intelligence officials who co coordinate operations closely with the American command post made it clear that, that the planned strike on the Kahan Shikun was special because of the high-value target. It was a red-hot change. The mission was out of the ordinary. Um, scrub the sked, the senior advisor told me. Every operations office in the region, in the Army, Marine Corps, Air Force, CIA, and NSA, had to know there was something going on. The Russians gave the Syrian Air Force a guided bomb, and that was, 
and that was a rarity. They're skimpy with their guided bombs and really share them with the Syrian Air Force. And the Syrians assigned the best pilot to the mission with their best wingman. The advanced intelligence of the target, was, as supplied by the Russians, was given the highest possibility score inside the American community. So in other words, my friends, when the Americans looked at all that the Syrians had done, and the, so they're saying the probability of being on target and complete correctly, mission criteria done effectively, was even by the American community the highest possible score. Hirsch confirms the Russian account of the incident, in which the Russian authorities allege that the Syrian Air Force bombed a terrorist warehouse and that the secondary bombings dispersed dangerous chemicals into the atmosphere. Strangely, her, if Hirsch's reporting is accurate, it says here, why Ru didn't Russia give the details account at the time? Guess what, my friends? They did. We read them to you. We read them to you. Okay, let, let us continue. However, Hirsch continues, a team of uh, Medicine San Frontiers, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, treating the victims at Khan Shihun at the clinic 60 miles to the north reported that eight patients, eight patients showed symptoms, including constricted pupils, muscle spasms, and involuntary defecation, of which are consistent with exposure to a neurotoxic agent such as sarin gas or similar components. Now, uh, one chemical, uh, excuse me, in other words, evidence suggests that there was more than one chemical responsible for the symptoms observed, which have not been in the case if the Syrian Air Force uh, had used sarin bomb only, which it has no percussion or ignition power to trigger in that contents. It should come as no surprise that Trump acted rashly without consideration of the facts on the ground. The available, Hirsch continues, the available intelligence made clear that the Syrians had targeted a jihadist me meeting site on April 4th using a Russian-supplied guided bomb equipped with, listen to this, conventional explosives. Details of the attack, including information on so-called high-value targets, has been provided by the Russians days in advance to the Americans and Allied military officials in Daha whose mission is to coordinate all U.S. allied Syrian and Russian Air Force operations in the region. None of this makes any sense, one officer told colleagues upon learning of the decision to bomb Syria, according to Hirsch. We know that the Syrians were not using a chemical attack, and now the Russians are furious, claiming that we have real intel and that the, we knew the truth. I guess it didn't matter whether we elected Clinton or Trump according to this military, U.S. military official speaking on terms of anonymity. According to Hirsch, Trump could not be swayed by 48 hours worth of intense intelligence briefings and decision-making following initial reports of the alleged chemical attack. Hirsch reportedly reviewed the transcripts of the real-time communications, explains that there is a total disconnect between the president and his military and intelligence advisors. My friends, i got to stop to go on. I wonder who's in control of the military, like we said before. Okay, Mr. Podesta, I'm not going to have the time to read this whole article. You see this guy right here? Look at this guy, huh? Looks real friendly. Well, let me tell you, he's real friendly with children. This is the guy that I've been telling you about, that in the uh, Vault 7s, this is the guy that was involved with all the pedophilia, including ordering $60,000 worth of hot dogs for Mr. Barry Satoro. You know him as Barack Obama. That's right. Barack Obama ordered $60,000 worth of hot dogs at one of their big galas. You guess what a hot dog is in pedophile code language, my friends? It's little boy. Little boys. That's right. Obama ordered $60,000 worth of little boys. Understand that. Now, this freak, this scumbag who has been involved with pedophilia yesterday was put in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee. And before he would do this, he came to an agreement with the Senate Intelligence Committee that he would only speak secretly behind closed doors. Why is it that when you get put in and you have to report to one, any one of these 
organizations that you don't have the ability to say, hey, well, I'll do this, but under these terms. Why? Because they don't want you to know about all the pedophilia that's going on. Over 10,000 elite pedophilia have been arrested. 1,500 have been found guilty, and now they're talking like songbirds. And Mr. Pedophilia, John Podesta, has been involved with this for decades, my friends, decades. So what they do? The Just Us system protected this guy, you see, and protected all their fellow pedophilia, all the judges, all the politicians, all the law enforcement, all the academia, all the government officials from all the alphabet agencies, especially in the media. Why was this man allowed to talk behind closed doors to give testimony? Why? Because the Just Us system is protecting the Just Us members. I have a quite lengthy article here on this person. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get time to do it. Uh, I've got, let me see here, I've got seven pages here of this guy uh, talking uh, basically about, uh, you know, pedophilia. How much fun they have. Um, three, wor three years of Nick Bryant's work. Uh, told by the late uh, Bill Pollitt, uh, done some contact work for the CIA, Vance Davis, uh, NSA, uh, and also all, all these people, all going on. 33,000 mishandled classified emails by Hillary Clinton. The death of Seth Ridge. Okay? All of it, folks. How Hillary Clinton sold uranium to the Russians through a front company named Uranium One and husband Bill made over $500,000 for one single 45-minute speech in Moscow given to the Clinton Foundation who made billions which it converted much of it to presidential campaign in violation of federal election laws. John Podesta and a group of Democrats called for Representative Steve Scalise to resign shortly after he began his efforts to combat human trafficking as a majority whip in the House. Understand that. Let me read that again. John Podesta and a group of Democrats called for Representative Steve Scalise to resign shortly after he began his efforts to combat human trafficking as the majority whip in the House. What happened on the very day that his bill was going on the floor, he was gunned down. He was gunned down. How, how did this person get directions to where they were going to be at the location with no protection? From the New York Times. I don't have time for it, my friends. But I, and that's probably a good thing, is I, it just erupts my emotions. But look at, take a good look at this pedophile and freak, because you're going to hear more about him. Now, how, did, how come you haven't heard about Uranium One? Because you haven't been watching this show. When the FBI and the Oregon State Police gunned down LaVoy Finnegan as he was unarmed with his hands in the air, that was all about taking the ranches off their land. Do you want to know why? Why the BLM went and took these people off their land at gunpoint? Because guess where the uranium was? In the ground below them. And the Clinton Foundation, as Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, we read all this to you, sold 29% of the known uranium in Connors, continental United States, kicked the ranches off their land, with the use of gun force, murdered Lavoy Finnegan, put the Bundys and others in prison, even when they were found innocent by a jury. It's the just us system, my friends. How come you didn't know about that? Because the media, as John Swinton said, is nothing more than intellectual prostitutes. That's why. Look at this guy. 
take a good look at this guy and understand this guy has hurt children. This guy is involved with spirit cooking. Remember that? Oh, you didn't hear that in the mainstream media? Folks, you need to watch this show and others like it. Let us continue. Okay. I want to get into this real quick. Uh, Daily Mail. Michael Reed, 30, has been charged with defacing objects of public interest, criminal trespass, and first-degree criminal mischief. An Arkansas man who live-streamed himself driving his new car, his car into the New Commandments Monument less than 24 hours after it was placed on the state capitol grounds has been arrested. Michael Reed, well, this is, this is the, the uh, monument, my friends. And by the way, look what it says. It's the Ten Commandments. Here's the freak. I'm sorry, folks. I, I, I shouldn't be... Say, yeah, I should. They're freaks. This guy is so ignorant. He thinks he acted rightly because he's convinced, because he went to school in the public fool system, that there is a separation of church and state in this country. There is a separation of church and state. The Catholic Church, or the Church of England at the time, cannot run the operations of the United States government. It doesn't mean we're not allowed to take away the foundations of our law, of our culture, of our civility, which is the Bible. Our laws, our way of life, our culture, our civility, our family structure, everything was based on the Bible. And look what's happened to our society since we have taken them, that foundation away from our society. Why? Because they don't want you believing in God. They want you believing in the government. They don't want you to have this understanding that you are a sovereign entity with unalienable rights granted to you by your Creator. They want you to believe that you have privileges granted you by an insolvent corporation called the United States of America Incorporated. I've run out of time, but understand, my friends, that this guy actually thought he was doing himself some good. Oh, and by the way, another thing he did, I guess there's a site called GoFundMe where you can ask people to donate to a cause. Well, on, on his GoFundMe, he, uh, he, asked, he opened up a GoFundMe site, and he asked for $20,000 fundraising because he needs a new car. And here is the beautiful statue. Here is the misguided, ignorant person who did this. Well, I will tell you right now, folks, I'm about as poor as I've ever been in my lifetime. Due to my medical condition, I haven't made any money since October of 2015. And you know what I'm going to be doing? The very first penny I make, I will be sending a check to have this monument. It may be $5, but I'll be sending a check to these people to get this monument up again. And I will tell you the only thing I disagree with this monument is the whole idea of thou shall not kill. The word is thou shall not murder. They wanted to make pacifists out of all of you. Okay, let us continue. I'm not going to have the time for all of this. Uh, let me see here. Let us read a quick headline. Sweden on the brink of civil war. National police chief in public speech says, help us, help us. Sweden is being torn to pieces by Muslim immigrants and refugees. Law enforcement is crying for help. And it is only a question of time before the country will need military intervention from abroad in order to avoid humanitarian catastrophe. And a leaked report concludes that the number of lawless areas, these are known as no-go zones. And do you know why they're no-go zones? That's because the people of Sweden and the law enforcement of Sweden don't go there in fear of their own lives. 
There are now 61 of these areas in Sweden that are under the control of Sharia law and Muslims, and the police do not go there. Police Chief Lars Alzerzo, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, there is lawlessness parts of Stockholm, that's Sweden's capital, folks, the legal system pillar in every democratic society has collapsed in Sweden. In, in areas, the extremists have taken completely over. The whole sense of justice and peace are threatened to the fact that the police is breaking down and it's only getting worse. Sweden is now in a disastrous situation. Well, my friends, it's interesting because there's been over 150 thousand reports of Swedish women that have been raped by Islamic extremists. Let us continue. You remember this young lady, Tulsi Gabbard, representative from Hawaii. I reported, we reported to you last week that she has put into play uh, that was going on the floor um, the Stop Funding the Terrorist Act. And I applaud Ms. Tulsi Gabbard for having the courage to put this in order. You want to know how many representatives signed on to it? Thirteen. Thirteen out of 435 representatives, 13 of them signed on to the Stop, the Terrorist, Stop Funding the Terrorist Act. Thirteen out of 435. What does that tell you about who's really in control of what you perceive to be your government? Why didn't these other people sign on to this? I'll tell you why. Because the people who really control them told them not to. Now, Rand Paul put on a match bill in the Senate. Would you like to know how many senators signed on to that bill? Zero. Zero. So out of 535 members of Congress, I was going to say representatives, but they're not, 14 of them signed on for your tax dollars to stop funding terrorists. 14 of them. Why don't you write to Mr. Leahy? Oh, I'll bet you Mr. Leahy's name comes up in some further elevation, uh, revelations. I'll bet you Mr. Sanders does. I don't know about Mr. Welch. But why don't you write your local whoever they are and ask them, how is it you did not sign on to the Tulsi Gabbard's bill to stop funding terrorists? After all, your sons and daughters are dying fighting ISIS or Al-Qaeda or ISIL or al Nusra, whatever they want to call it this week. You remember Lieutenant General Flynn? The Obama administration funded, supplied, and trained Al-Qaeda. What did they do next week? They changed the name to ISIS so you would forget about it. After all, as Karl Rove said, you can study us and study us and study us, and all we will do is merely change your reality. Ms. Tulsi Gabbard, I applaud you. I'd be interested to see how much of the, they're going to fund against her in the next election. Let us continue. Guita why guitar is being targeted? Petro won dominance in the coming war in Iran. Qatar hasn't been playing ball with the U.S. Proved, approved Saudi-led isolate Iran program, partly because Doya has made independence from the Rati a hallmark of its foreign policy, but mostly because Qatar and Iran shared the world's largest natural gas field. U.S. President Donald Trump to a speech to assemble the Gulf leaders in Saudi Arabia May 21st is worth reading in full, yet it's deeply disturbing. I do not, I have it, I don't have the time to read it to you now. Uh, having praised himself for the $100 billion arms deal with the Saudis, unbelievable, he goes on to talk about the threat posed by terrorism. But yet, only 14 out of 535 members of the United States Congress signed on the bill to stop 
funding the terrorists. Think of that. Now, the reason I don't have time, again, my friends, the, I was going to read this whole thing to you, and maybe I will next week, but the reason why Qatar is being targeted is because Qatar announced two or three weeks ago now that they are going to accept the Chinese yuan, which is part of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and the 34 other countries that have now signed on to it which is going to put pressure on the Bretton Woods Agreement, which keeps the petrodollar alive. And that's the reason why your sons and daughters have been going to undeclared, unconstitutional wars since 1945. It's all about the Bretton Woods Agreement. Keep the petrodollar going. Dominance over the people of the world. Dominance over the nations of the world. What was it Heinz Kissinger said? You know him as Henry. His real name was Heinz. What did Heinz Kissinger say? Control food, you, you control the people. Control the oil, you control the nations. Well, you can't control every drop of oil, but what you can control is the transfer of oil, and you control the transfer of oil by controlling the medium of exchange, which is the petrodollar. And the reason why Trump did this deal with Saudi Arabia is because Saudi Arabia buys all of our treasury bonds to keep the facade, which we've explained to you so many times, going. And I've run out of time. Qatar, my friends, is being targeted, even though they supplement terrorists, they're being targeted because they haven't gone along with the international bankers now. They went, they're going to accept the yuan, which is backed by, as I said, China, Russia, Brazil, India, and South Africa, and 34 other countries, which is going to put pressure on the Bretton Woods Agreement, the petrodollar. This is why your sons and daughters have been going to war and bleeding. This is why you had to give up all your liberties. This is why George Soros and others are bringing in all of these immigrants. You know, last night I was going to ask Bill to do it, but I already gave him too much this week. I was looking at about, I don't know, I want to say 50 to 60 pitches of immigrants coming into various countries. You want to know how many women and children I saw? Not one. Not one child, not one woman. They were all military-aged men. And you wonder why there's 61 areas in Sweden where the police are afraid to go, and the Sweden nationals, the people of Sweden, are actually leaving the areas and surrendering it to them? And it's under a foreign Sharia law, which has never been authorized by the government and never been implemented by the people? And you know what else, folks? You've got to think about this scumbag right here is all behind it. But now the tide's turning on this scumbag because Roger Stone and others are in his native country of Hungary. And they're going after all his foundations that have created all this chaos. They're going after him. And we're going to keep a close eye on that. Roger Stone, two days ago, met with the president of Hungary. You wonder why they're sweating, my friends? Because all their protective entities are crumbling. They've dumbed you down through the public indoctrination system, the public fool system that you know is public school. They've taken away the intrinsic value of your money. You have Federal Reserve notes, not dollars. You don't own your land, Senate Document 43. You don't own anything, actually, Senate Document 43. You bond your children to the birth certificate. People are starting to wake up. We're winning the information war. Jump on board. Get educated. Understand there's a war being waged against you, and understand that war is turning from asymmetrical to symmetrical, and that's why the USS Fitzgerald incident took place. My friends, I didn't have the chance to get at everything today. That's how much is going on in the world. 
We're always thankful you take the time from your busy day to view our programs, and we always close in asking you to seek truth, obtain knowledge, and manifest kindness to your fellow man. And we always close in reminding you that your government is your responsibility, and we thank you for watching. Read between the lines.